Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, remove max number of edges to keep a graph fully traversable. You know it's the end of the month when we're getting a hard problem almost every single day and this one is definitely pretty hard. We're given an undirected graph of n nodes and what's interesting about this graph is the edges, which can be of three different types. The first type is, in this case, the red ones, which are ones that only Alice can traverse. Type two are the blue ones here, which means that only Bob can traverse these edges. And type three are the ones that both Alice and Bob can traverse this edge. So if we were to draw out the graph of what each Alice and Bob can actually do, it would be a subset of this graph. Doing it for Alice, we have all four graphs connected. Alice can reach all four nodes because Alice can traverse the red ones as well as the blue ones, I just realized when I was explaining the types, type two is actually green. So that's the one that Bob can traverse. So Alice will not be able to traverse that one. Alice can traverse all the others though. So Alice can still get to every single node in the graph. Bob's is a bit different because he can traverse the blue and green ones. So his will look something like this. Clearly, Bob can reach every single node in the graph because remember, it's undirected. These edges can go in both directions. Now, the most important thing here is that, first of all, this is a disjoint set, a.k.a. union find problem here. And once you realize that, this isn't a super crazy problem. It's definitely not easy, I'll admit. It's very tricky, but this is the entire problem, believe it or not, just applying the union find data structure to this problem in a pretty clever way, but that's pretty much it. So now let me explain why this is a disjoint set problem, and then we're going to go ahead and code this up. First of all, though, if you have not already solved this problem, leak code 684, I highly recommend taking a look. I have solved it on this channel and I'll link it below. But in this problem, I basically explain union find. You can see that that is most of the code for this solution. And then here you can see the actual main function just has a few lines of code because usually for these types of problems, just coding up union find is the entire solution. And this problem is similar, but it's a bit more involved. For these hard problems, I really wish leak code would have like a suggested problem like the one I was just showing a second ago because you definitely should not attempt this problem until you have solved that other one. Now, back to the problem. First of all, what are we even being asked? Well, given this graph and the types of edges that Alice and Bob can traverse, we want to know how many of these edges can we just flat out remove to keep the graph still fully traversable. What does fully traversable mean here? It means for those graphs I was showing for Alice and Bob, we need Bob and Alice to be able to reach every single node in the entire graph. So that's the problem. How many edges can we remove while keeping the graph traversable for both Alice and Bob? In other words, what's the maximum number of edges we can remove to keep the graph connected for both Alice and Bob? Now, you might be thinking, if we only had one type of edge, this problem would be really, really easy. It would be pretty much exactly like that 684 problem I just showed you. The only difference here is that we have different types of edges. So taking that idea and applying it to the union find data structure, the connected component, aka disjoint set data structure. Let's see how we can apply union find to this problem, even though we have multiple types of edges. The problem here is how do we know if this graph is connected? If we just maintain a single union find data structure, as we add type three edges, these blue ones that can be traversed by both Alice and Bob, we can add these ones because both of them can traverse them, but we can't really add Alice only edges to our single union find instance because th these don't really tell us whether Bob will be able to traverse it or not. So the simplest solution here is actually to create two union find instances. And one of the instances is going to be for Alice and the other one is going to be for Bob. 
It's pretty clever, but it's really, really simple once you realize it, because when we have two instances, what we can do is we can say for Alice only edges, add those to the Alice instance for our disjoint set. For the Bob only edges, which are the green ones, add that to the Bob only disjoint set. But for the type three edges, which can be added to either one, add those to both sets. Add them to both Alice and Bob set because both Alice and Bob can traverse those edges. So that's kind of the motivation here. Now, what are we actually gonna be using union find for? I haven't really talked about what union find actually is. So if you're not familiar with it, I definitely recommend checking out that video I suggested. So I won't really go over that too much here, but I will say that at a high level, union find is just gonna be taking two nodes and merging them together. Merging them meaning saying that two nodes like these two are separate currently. Maybe one is this one and this is two. And by unioning them, we are going to make this a single connected component. Before we had two connected components, this one and this one. Now we just have a single one. And this will help us because what we're gonna do is start adding all of these edges to our two distinct union find instances. And we're gonna keep doing that until we've gone through all the edges. Okay, and then at the end, we will have our two instances. How do we know at the end what was the max number of edges to remove? Well, basically, instead of actually removing these edges, we are actually gonna start to add the edges. We're gonna kind of reverse the question because that's kind of how union find actually works. We don't actually remove edges, we merge them. So that's kind of how you might come up with this, you could say trick because union find itself doesn't remove edges, it merges them. So you kind of have to reverse the problem. My guess is they intentionally made it so the problem is phrased in this way, remove the number of edges. No, you should be adding the number of edges. So we're gonna try to approach this problem in the reverse way. Instead of returning the number of edges we can remove, we're going to take the total number of edges and subtract from it, subtract from the total number of edges, the number of edges we can add. So this is what we are going to calculate. This is the number that we need to calculate and then we can solve this equation and then we will have our result, let's call it X, and then we will have solved the problem. And since we're pretty much just going through every single edge and we're going to be calling that union method on it by unioning two nodes for each edge, the overall time complexity of this is gonna be big O of N. So a quick high level walkthrough, it's going to work pretty much how I described. We're gonna go through the list of edges. Let's say that this is the first one. And we're gonna check if these two nodes have not already been unioned together with our union find data structure. Let's just assume that that data structure will abstract most of that for us. So we try combining these two nodes. We see that they're not already combined. So we basically say that one and three are connected, but only for Alice. So we would make this operation only to Alice's Let's say we do the same thing for this edge and this edge. So Alice can reach these three nodes. Well, actually all four nodes. But Alice can also traverse these blue edges because those are accessible to Alice and Bob. So then we'd have five edges connecting them. Well, not quite. What we would do, let's say with our union find, is we would add these two, we'd connect these two. We then we try it with this node. This node is not connected to one. So with this edge over here, we're gonna connect them as well. We might try the same thing with four and connect them as well. Then we might try to use this edge over here, connecting two and three. What we would find though, is these are already connected. So our union find should indicate that. We should have like a return value here that we can use to indicate whether we need to connect these two or not, because that's going to play into the number of edges to keep the graph fully traversable, AKA fully connected. So now we've added three edges. When we get to this fourth edge, we really Realize we don't need this fourth edge. We really don't. So we don't increment our count. So our count at this point would be three. There are a few tricks that I want to mention because they're definitely not easy to come up with on your own. But once you understand them, they do make this problem easier. The most important one being that we should probably add all of the type three edges before we try to add any of the other Alice or Bob exclusive edges. The reason being is because we're actually going to have a single 
count variable, which is going to keep track of not the number of edges we're going to remove, but the number of edges that we're going to keep. And we basically know that these green edges are worth basically two equivalent type one and type two edges in the same position. So basically, if we took this green edge and moved it over here like this, I guess, and got rid of these other ones, this graph is the exact same. So basically, we do favor the green edges because if we didn't iterate through the green ones first, and suppose we had a graph that looked like this, we have two nodes and we have three edges between them. What order should we go through the edges? Well, if we start with red, our count is going to be plus one because we're going to see that this red does add a connection between these two nodes. Then we're going to go to blue and we're once again going to increment this by one because red tells us there's a connection for Alice. A blue tells us there's a connection for Bob. So now we are at a count of two. Remember, this count tells us how many edges we are going to keep, but we don't need to keep two edges. We only need to really keep one edge, and we would know that if we had started going through the green edges first, because what would happen is we would first go through this green one. It applies to both Alice and Bob. We'd perform the union, but this time we'd perform the union on both instances of our union find data structure for Alice and for Bob. We do it for both of them. Then when we see the red and blue edges, we see that they're redundant. We don't need this edge and we don't need this edge so we can definitely remove the edges which is what we're trying to maximize for that's the main stuff here the last thing to note is that in some cases we do want to return a negative one value if alice and bob can't fully traverse the graph which is why we only need a single count variable here which tells us the edges that we are going to keep that we need to keep, I guess you could say, to keep the graph connected. And since that's what this count is going to represent for us, how do we know if a component is fully connected or not? We know we're gonna have two union find instances, one for Alice and one for Bob. How do we know if it's connected or not? Well, we know the number of components in a graph and we know the number of successful merges or unions that we are going to do. So think of it this way, if we start with one, two, three components, then that's how many components we have. Now, if we do a merge, we merge these two together. How many components do we have left? Looks like two to me. And if we do another merge here, now we are left with just a single fully connected component. Now, if we do a merge again, where we just merge maybe these two nodes once again, or some other component that's already connected to them, then our count would not change. It would remain a total of two connected components. So a lot of ideas to discuss here, but we're at the point where we can start coding it up and it won't be too bad. Okay, so now let's get into the code. So here you can see that I've coded up the union find data structure. It's about 30 lines of code in Python. I won't go through it super in depth, I will say that if you're new to union find, it's definitely challenging at first conceptually in terms of code. It's not too bad. You can see there's not a lot of like crazy stuff going on here, but quickly with the constructor, we're initializing the number of components with N and we're keeping two arrays, one to keep track of the parent of every single node and one to keep track of the rank, AKA size of each component. We have one method to find the root parent of a component. X is going to be the value of it. And then another method to actually union those two components together, it's gonna to return one if we are successful or zero if the components are already connected. And we do have some path compression and union by rank going on. And we are maintaining the total number of components. So if we do perform a union, we decrement the total number of components. And we need that because at the end, we are going to need to know if our data structure is fully connected or not. And the way we're going to basically know that is if our number of components is equal to one. I have less than or equal to one, but I'm pretty sure you can get away with it like this as well. So that's pretty much the union find stuff. Now to actually use this beast, maybe who knows in a real coding interview, you might not have to do this portion, but maybe you might. So it's definitely worth knowing. But for the actual solution, you can see it's not too bad now. We are going to create a union find instance for Alice and for Bob. 
So a separate one, these are not the same, these are separate objects. And we're going to have the total number of edges we have to keep. We are required to keep this number of edges for the graph to be connected. Then we start iterating through the edges. The reason we have two loops to do this is because I want to make sure we complete all of the green or not. Let's forget about color, but basically the type three edges, which were the ones that both Alice and Bob can traverse. So what I'm doing here is going through every edge. I'm getting the type the source node and the destination node. I'm checking, is it a type three node? If it is, I want to call union find or union on the Alice instance that we created. And I want to union these two nodes together. I'm going to do the same thing on Bob's instance for Bob. I also want to union these two nodes together. It's a type three edge after all, but with the return value of these two method calls, we're going to take the bitwise or because we know each of these returns a zero or a one. And pretty much we want the count to be incremented by one every single time. So if we're being honest with ourselves, we don't really need this. We could just put a one here and then just make sure we call these. We could do it on separate lines. It doesn't really matter, but we're at a high level. This is what we're doing. We're basically calling union on Alice, calling union on Bob, and then incrementing the count by one. But this is just a fancier way to write it. It doesn't really matter in my opinion, but some people get mad if I don't have the most concise code. So I try to show you the different ways to do it. Now, after we have done all the type three edges, we basically do the exact same thing here with a type one and type two edges. You can see we're taking the return value and adding that to the count. That's because because remember with union, we're either returning a one if we're successful or zero if not. So after we've done all of that, we know if the graphs are connected, we can check that by using the helper method on the union find. To know the number of edges we had to remove, let's take the total number of edges subtracted by the number of edges we have to keep. And then that will basically be the number that we are removing. So that's, you can see what I'm returning here. But if this is not the case, just go ahead and return negative one because either Alice can't reach every single node or uh, Bob can't reach every single node. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great weekend and get some rest from all this leak code grinding.